I was 34. Um, I had just turned 34 in May. I felt young. I felt really young. I, I meet people who were in their 20s when they were diagnosed, which is just like, you didn't, sometimes it feels like people didn't even get a chance to really start their life before they were dealing with this alternative life. gosh, my alarm bells went off just in time to get me in for that colonoscopy so that I could start my process. Um, it was a tough road to do each step of it. My oncologist referred to it as a marathon, and so we did it in three legs was how we talked about it. And the first leg was that initial radiation and chemo, um, six weeks of that, took some time off. Then surgery was the second leg, which surgery is a bear. It's just a lot. And I had a nine and a half hour surgery. Um, it's I had what's called total proctocolectomy with APR reconstruction, which they took everything below my small intestine and then rebuilt my bottom with um, muscle and tissue from my abdomen. So I was cut open there on my abdomen. Um, I had an ileostomy placed, um, live with an ostomy bag now. And at the same time, because of this genetic component with Lynch syndrome, I chose to have an elective hysterectomy. Um, had two kids, really fortunate to get to be a mom and love my kids. Um, and I love children and the idea of like my life going farther, you know, who knows what would have happened, but I could not have that risk because I, I wanted every risk out of me. That was just the way I felt in that time. And I said, take it all doc, like literally everything. I, I do know even my my one of my surgeons said, I'm sorry, I had to like, they removed some of my tailbone because of where it was. They were just worried about it. And I said, don't need it. Don't need it. So um, that was tough. And then after surgery, I did have a um, nine week break. And then I went in for uh, IV chemo, which was just another part of the marathon. I did six treatments of that. And then um slowly started to ease back into trying to be, you know, a normal person or the person that I, that I used to be. Um, and I've just really learned through that process that you don't, there's no going back. There's no going back to square one or to normal, not with your body, not with your mind, not with everything. Um, but I feel really good, um, which always kind of, worries me a little bit, but I, I've i had no evidence of disease since my surgery. So I've had all clear scans. Thankfully, I've had all, all of my, I do um, a blood residue test or excuse me, a tumor residue blood test. All of those have come back clear. So all is going great. My ostomy works great. I'm learning and growing and um, accepting that and just my body overall after everything that's happened. Ostomy bag is um, a bag that is worn on your abdomen. Mine is connected to my small intestine. And so my small intestine comes out of my abdomen. There's a tiny little piece of it. It's called a stoma. And a stoma is just another word for opening. Um, you can have a stoma for your bladder have a stoma for your colon or you can have a stoma for your small intestine. Um, mine is again small intestine so it's referred to as ileostomy um, and basically it's a medical adhesive that sticks the bag to my body and I change the bag. Um, every, again different ostomies have different you know kind of schedules but I tend to change my bag every third morning um, but in between that my bag just stays on. I empty it when it's full um, my life as far as using the bathroom is altered, 
But the only part that's really impacted by that is the part that happens when I close the door and no one's in there with me. Yeah, I mean, like life does, it takes a really long time for it to kind of resettle down, but it does settle back down. And I've been learning um, through talking to other people who've been through this, how to live my life now with this Lynch syndrome diagnosis, because it is a roller coaster. I have to be scanned more, more often than the average cancer survivor. Uh, I have a lot more like a myriad of tests instead of very focused tests because I have these other cancer um, risk factors because of my genetic condition. But I think that it, it's been going pretty good. I, I, this is hard. This is hard for anyone. It is an alter. It's a total change in your perspective. What your, you know, kind of daily life is like changes. And then, you know, it gives me this new drive that I really want other people to know about this. I want other people to know about going through cancer treatments and what really that's like so that you don't feel like you're not doing a good job because you're not inspirational or you're not feeling like every post you post is only the positive side of it. Because when I first started sharing my journey, that was truly where I was at. I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it with a smile and I'm going to prove everyone, you know, I can handle this. And there are parts of it that if I just wouldn't let myself feel those feelings, I don't think I would have ever come through them. And so my little like tagline, I think, is just being authentic through everything that's happened to me and saying like, there are parts of me that I feel like have grown and I um, appreciate the person I am now. And then there's are other parts of me that I feel like it's, I was damaged during this and my mind is still trying to grasp how does somebody go through this and keep going and part of my success in it is truly just seeing other people do it other people have lived this I'm not the first person I'm not the first person with an ostomy um we just got to keep changing how we talk about this stuff making it less taboo and on the other side of it um after cancer, after cancer is over or after treatment is over is the fact that this is a different, a different kind of fight that we're in um, to keep going and to, you know, use that shifted perspective for positive things. Cause I know for me, it shifted perspective, it brings me down sometimes because I see so many people walking around, not taking advantage of their health or taking advantage of knowledge that's available to them. Um, but, you know, I also feel a lot more um, self-assured. Self I feel like I can do things that I didn't think I could do before. Um, I'm more independent as a person. I'm more confident. I'm more willing to look at myself and say, all right, you know, this is the body you have now. And you're going to, you know, like one of my first things that I wrote that really started to change the tide of like how I was sharing my story was like, are you just going to lay here and cry about this all the time? Or are you going to get up and live? Like, got to get up and live, let it out, cry it out, and then get up and try to live your, you know, live your every day the best that you can, because it slowly, slowly, slowly does get better after cancer. And then, you know, there are other parts that you have to have as a challenge and that's like going in for more screenings and staying on top of that I when I was told that I had was going to have an ostomy bag I don't think I had ever heard of an ostomy before it's it I I heard him say bag and I understood what he was saying to me about removing my colon and it was a little foggy there but one of the first things I did was I went home and looked online I looked up ostomy on Instagram and wouldn't you know it there's a lot of really amazing people that have an ostomy and not only are they amazing but they're um they're they're um smart enough to know that when you go looking for support a lot of times support groups can be a place where people are struggling 
I always looked at it as a, like, I can go into a support group without anyone even knowing I'm there if I just look up hashtag ostomy online and I can read about people who are doing this every day and I can see women in bathing suits owning this. And I thought, gosh, I don't even go, I wouldn't even go in a bathing suit. I'm not even going in a two piece bathing suit on my Instagram before my ostomy bag. I will never, I thought, I'll never in a million years do what they're doing. But seeing them, made me realize that, okay, well, people are living with these things. Um, and it, it, it was really powerful for me. So a little backstory on why I'm kind of driven in this format of Instagram and social media. And it's so casual, you know, people can see it. And the more they see ostomy bag, I feel like that taboo comes down. Um, we, we feel le less like we have to hide it away or whatever. Um, I feel like when I heard ostomy, ostomy felt to me worse than cancer. I just was like, you've got to be kidding me. My life is going to be over. I'm going to be a monster. I'm not going, I don't even want this. I don't, you know, and I just blah, 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 melted down. And then once I could see people living positively with an ostomy and see women my age having one too because it feels like you hear that you start looking at it all the brochures are old people it's not it doesn't feel like a 34 year old woman should have this um but I slowly got my mind wrapped around it and I tell people now at the time the ostomy to me seemed like it would be the worst part of this whole thing and for me now it's the easiest part of everything I've been through is to live with an ostomy um, that impacts me so much less in my day-to-day -day life than the mental hardship of going through cancer, cancer treatment, uh, scans, post-cancer, all of those things. So when people come to me and say, I'm going to have an ostomy bag, I'm like, well, take a deep breath because this is a lot to digest and it did take me time and any strong brave out there person um handling their ostomy well had those same feelings too they had a moment of i don't know if i can even do this but again why i'm out here being loud mouth is that i live my i live my life with an ostomy i am a mom with my ostomy i chase my kids the same I go to concerts, I hang out with my friends, I travel, I go on airplanes, I just did the Disney cruise with my two girls. I do it all with the ostomy and it's not the way I saw my life when I was a little girl, but it's not the worst thing. My message to anyone who is either recently diagnosed or still grappling with their diagnosis is just one thing at a time, one appointment at a time, one you know, get your, get your, your questions ready, have, have your, have yourself kind of organized, but focus on that one step at a time. I remember trying to like, in my mind's eye, see the other side of surgery. And when I couldn't see that, I thought to myself, am I going to die during surgery? Because I couldn't envision what my life was going to be like. I couldn't see myself like, having the ostomy and doing it. But when I woke up and the surgery was over, I just did that same thing one step at a time. I would say, oh my gosh, my drain's full. Okay, drain my drain. Okay, my bag. Okay, now I need to change my bag. Okay, one step at a time. And I remember with shaky hands, changing my bag for the first time. Um, but really just keep going anything we do in life the more you do it the less the less mind-blowing it is and um just go easy on yourself this is such a hard process and I've spent and spend I will fully admit a lot of time beating myself up for not handling it better not being a better advocate not knowing the things I felt like I should have known before um and I keep coming back time and time again to we all just do the best we can where we're at. If I just do one step at a time, one test at a time, you know, one idea at a time, I'll get there. And it's allowed me to learn a lot more than I ever thought was possible. 
and make a lot of amazing friends. I mean, cancer is just the worst club to be a part of, but it is truly, it's the best people I've met are cancer. So if you are there, find a support system. It doesn't need to be big. It doesn't need to be grand and it doesn't need to be um, the things that we see on TV or social media or any of that. Find a few people who get it, talk to them, go easy on yourself and just keep going because because this is hard, this is hard, but um, it's, it's doable. It's worth, life is worth living. <laughs>